thank you for convening this hearing, the first hearing of the year, but the latest in a series of hearings that Senator Blumenthal and I have been able to, to host together. And uh, Senator Blumenthal has just done tremendous, tremendous work chairing this committee. And I've, I've started now to notice a pattern. And this is the fifth or sixth hearing I think we've had. And I've noticed now a, a, a pretty decided pattern. And it goes something like this. You have, on the one hand, all of the AI cheerleaders who say that AI is going to be wonderful. AI is going to be life-changing. It's going to be world-changing. It's, it's going to be the best thing that has ever happened to the human race or something to that effect. And then you have a group of people who have concerns. And they say, well, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, what's AI going to do to jobs? What's AI going to mean for my privacy? What's AI going to mean for my kids? And here's the pattern I've noticed over a year. Almost everybody who takes the AI cheerleading stance is here in this building. And then when you leave the confines of this building and the lobbyists who inhabit it, when you go out and actually talk to real people working real jobs, you find the second set of concerns. I have yet to talk to a Missourian who is an enthusiastic, no-holds-barred cheerleader for AI. Not one. There probably is someone somewhere, but they haven't talked to me yet. What I hear over and over and over from workaday people who are working their job, raising their kids, trying to just, you know, keep it going, what they say over and over is, I don't know about this. I don't know what this is going to mean for my kids online. I don't know what this is going to mean for my job in the future. I just, I don't know. I have concerns. And they also usually say, I sure really wish that Congress would do something about this. And that leads me to the second observation, the second pattern that I have noticed in this last year. And that is while there's a lot of talk about the need for Congress to act, we're beginning to slip into a familiar pattern whereby the biggest companies who increasingly control this technology, just like they've controlled social media, don't want us to act and are willing to expend any amount of resources, money, time, and effort, influence, to make sure we don't. Senator Blumenthal mentioned our bipartisan bill that would just, a, a very modest bill, if I may say, that would just clarify that AI-generated tools are not entitled to the Section 230 protections. Very modest. Do you know when we had AI executives sitting right here in this room and we asked them directly, do you think Section 230 covers your model in your industry? They said no. So Senator Blumenthal and I wrote it up and said, well, good, good. This is consensus. Let's pass this. I went to the floor to try to pass this bill in December and immediately was blocked and objected to. The same story we've been hearing for years from the technology companies. It's always theoretically, we should put safeguards in place for real people. But when you come to do it, it's, oh, no, 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 we can't. It's too soon. It's too much. It's, it's too quick. And what it really means is it would interfere with our profits. I mean, that, that's what they really mean. We cannot allow that pattern to continue with AI. And that's the final thing I notice is, is this, it, it, from the hearings and the information we've gathered, is AI is supposed to be new, but it really is contributing to what is now a, fam a familiar, familiar story, which is the monopolization in this country of information, of data, of, of large swaths of our economy. AI increasingly controlled by two, three, four of the biggest companies, not just in this country, the biggest companies in the world. And apropos of today's subject of this hearing, I think we have to ask ourselves, do we want all the news and information in this nation to be controlled by two or three companies? I certainly don't. I certainly don't. So I think we've got to ask ourselves, what are we going to do practically to make sure that normal people, whether they are journalists, whether they're bloggers, or whether it's just the, the working mom at home, what they can do to protect their work product, their information, their data, how are we going to make sure they are able to keep control of it? How they are able to vindicate their rights? Because they do have rights, and they should have rights. And it shouldn't be that just because the biggest companies in the world want to gobble up your data, they should be able to do it, and you know what? Too bad. We're all just supposed to live with it. So I think we've got a tall task in front of us. I salute Senator Blumenthal again for, for holding these hearings, and I hope that we'll be able to drive towards clarity and then towards solutions, because that's what the American people deserve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Hawley. Uh, I'm going to... Turn to Senator Klobuchar, who's been a leader in this area, as you know.